This plant is called Aeschcananthus longicollis, or otherwise known as zebra basket vine. I actually had known it as Aeschcananthus marmoratus, but I think that the scientific name actually recently got changed. I've always loved this plant. When I first saw it, I saw it at my green market, and it was really striking because if you could see here, it has these really beautiful purple undersides. So I don't know, maybe because of its markings, that's why it's called zebra basket vine, even though I don't think it looks anything like zebra markings. It's a little bit more like leopard spots. But um, this particular plant is native to Indonesia, across China, also Malaysia. And just like its other Aeschcananthus relatives, it is an epiphyte. So it's growing on trees and on tree limbs and doesn't really have much of a root structure. So it's super comfortable in growing in a pot that is maybe a little bit more small or um, that can, it can actually stand being a little bit more root bound. I, because it's an epiphyte, I would say giving it a little bit more of a well-draining soil is going to be the way to go. You might even be able to get away with a little bit of an orchid mix or take some regular potting medium, take that orchid mix and also some uh, perlite and kind of mix it up. And I think that would probably be a perfect medium for this plant and it's because it's mimicking a little bit more of its native environment. You'll also see that the leaves are semi-succulent and also the, uh, the stems are also a little bit more on the succulent side. They do have a tendency to get a little woodier as they age, um, but otherwise they make an incredible hanging basket plant. I mean, this is so beautiful if you're kind of walking under it and you could see the purple undersides and, and then just notice the, the dark green on top of the leaf surface. But as far as these plants go, I'm growing them in northeast facing light. So it's a really nice gentle light, which I think is probably more customary because these are kind of growing in the understories of forests. And I'm watering pretty much on a weekly basis. If there's any kind of a little bit more harsher light, then I'll probably water this a little bit more regularly. As far as fertilizing goes, you could get away with doing it on a monthly basis, maybe a 795 or even a 10, 10, 10 if you're going the synthetic route and just cut that in by half. Or you could use a, a, more, a more gentle, like a gentler organic fertilizer and also keep that on a monthly basis. I've had these plants for a long time. This is actually a cutting off of one of the other ones that I have, and this one is relatively new. It's about two years old, but this is actually from a cutting that's about four years old. And I haven't had any kind of problem whatsoever with pests. So I would say that these are great to have around the house if you have space for, and if you want something that looks beautiful in a hanging basket.